Hi kindergartners, we're back for another read aloud today. Um, three more stories for us to read from our classroom library. We have Crown, an ode to the fresh cut. This one is written by Derek C. Barnes, illustrated, or Derek Barnes with illustrations by Gordon C. James. This one was given to us by a student in our class. Thank you, friend, for this book. It's a good one. Next, we'll have Duck on a Tractor by David Shannon. This one is really silly. I like it. And then finally, we'll finish with If You Give a Mouse a Cookie. We've read a story similar to this one by the same author, um, Laura Numeroff. Do you remember what that story was? It's by the same author, and it's similar to this one, If You Give a Mouse a Cookie. See if you remember that one. But we will start with Crown. An Ode to the Fresh Cut. Last time we read a story um, of the book was Princess Hair, about the different hairstyles that girls have. So while we're reading this one, see if you can compare and contrast the different hairstyles that boys have and girls have. Um, and see, what do you notice? What is similar? What is the same? And what is different? When it's your turn in the chair, you stand at attention and forget about who you were when you walked through that door. You came in as a lump of clay, a blank canvas, a slab of marble. But when my man is done with you, they'll want to post you up in a museum. That's my word. He'll drape you like royalty with that cape to keep the fine hairs off your neck and your princely robes. It's amazing what a tight fade, high, low, bald, does for your confidence. Dark Caesar. Who knows? You might just smash that geography exam tomorrow and rearrange the entire principles on a roll. A fresh cut does something to your brain, right? It hooks up your intellectual. You're a star. A brilliant, blazing star. Not the kind that you find on the sidewalk in Hollywood. Nope. They're gonna have to wear shades when they look up to catch your shine. He'll lean you back in the chair, dab that cool shaving cream on your forehead, and then craft a flawless line with that razor. Slow, steady, surgical. It frames your swagger. The cute girl in the class across the way won't be able to keep her pretty eyes off you. Her friends will giggle and whisper, Girl, he's so fine. Yeah, that's what they'll say. The whole school will be seasick from the rows and rows of ripples. You'll have more waves on your head than the Atlantic Ocean. Shout out to my do-rag and patience. There's a dude to the left of you with a faux hawk. Deep part, skin fade. He looks presidential. Maybe he's the CEO of a tech company that manufactures cool. He's a boss. That's how important he looks. Dude to the right of you looks majestic. There are thousands of black angels waiting to guide and protect him as soon as he steps foot out that door. That's how important he looks. There's a dude standing in the mirror that can't get the, over the masterful designs crafted on the side of his dome. Everywhere he goes, people will ask for his autograph. He looks that fresh. He looks like he owns a few acres of land on Saturn. Maybe there's a river named after him on Mars. He looks that important. There are two dudes, one with locks, the other with cornrows, and a lady with butter, a butterscotch complexion. And all they want is a shape up. Tapered sides, a trim, and a crisp but subtle line. And sometimes in life, that's all you ever need. A crisp but subtle line. When your barber is done, you'll feel like a million dollars and some change. When his fingertips hit you with that apple green alcohol or that witch hazel, it'll sting, but not like a scorpion or a hornet, more like an electric stamp of approval. And when you see the, the cut yourself in that handheld mirror, you'll smile a really big smile. That's the you that you love the most. That's the you that wins. Everything. That's the gold medal you. Every person in the shop will rise to their feet and give you a round of applause for being so fly. Not really, but they'll look like they want to. You'll see it in their eyes. It's the look your English teacher gives you when she hands you your last test with a bright red 97 slapped on it. It's how your mother looks at you before she calls you beautiful. Flowers are beautiful, sunrises are beautiful. 
being viewed in your mother's eyes as someone that matters, now that's beautiful. And you'll take it. You don't mind at all. Finally, he'll remove your cape, then swipe you down with a brush made from a golden horse tail. You'll put the money in his hand without even expecting change back. Tip that man. Tip that man. It was worth it. It always is. You know why? Because you'll leave out of the shop every single time feeling the exact same way. Magnificent, flawless, like royalty. Hello world. mostly about boy haircuts and uh, different haircuts that guys can get, that boys can get. Alright, next up is duck on a tractor. I've never seen a duck drive a tractor before, so this should be a fun one. Down on the farm, duck sometimes got wild ideas. One day he decided he could ride a bike, so he did. Then he spotted the tractor. I bet I can drive a tractor, he said. The other animals weren't so sure, but they all said, well, if he can ride a bike, maybe he can drive a tractor too. Duck climbed on the tractor and looked around. He pushed some pedals and wiggled a metal stick, but nothing happened. Then a shiny little piece of metal by the steering wheel caught his eye. He pulled it out, pushed it in, and then he turned it. All of a sudden, the tractor shook and coughed and rumbled. It began to move. At first, it moved very slowly, and it jerked a lot, but it was fun. Duck drove around the barnyard until he got the hang of it. Then, he stu stopped in front of the other animals. Climb on, everybody, shouted Duck. Dog was first. He jumped right up next to Duck. Woof, said Dog. But what he thought was, we're going for a ride. To everyone's surprise, Cla Cow clambered on next. Moo, said Cow. But what she thought was, this is the silliest thing I've ever done. Pig and Pig took a seat in the back. Oink, said Pig and Pig. But what they thought was, this sure beats walking. Then came Chicken, Mouse, and Goat. Squawk, said Chicken. But what she thought was, last one on is a rotten egg. Squeak, said Mouse. But what she thought was, I can see everything from up here. Bah, said Goat. But what he thought was, I'm hungry. Does the garbage, garbage dump have a drive through window? Next up were horse and cat. Cat jumped up gracefully on the tractor. Horse, not so much. Meow, said cat, but what she thought was, I was going to take a nap, but this should be very interesting. Nay, said horse, but what he thought was, I think I'd rather walk. <laughs> Look at his face. The only one left on the ground was sheep. Bah, said sheep, but what she thought was, this is too dangerous. Get on, sheep, everyone shouted, but sheep wouldn't budge. So Duck started driving away without her. Wait, cried sheep, don't leave me here all alone. She ran after the tractor and took a flying leap onto it. Quack, yelled Duck, but what he thought was, wahoo. Duck steered the tractor down the lane and out onto the main road. And before long, they were driving right through the middle of town. It was lunchtime, so most people were at the diner. They all looked up when Duck and the other animals passed by the big window. A little boy named Edison was having lunch with his grandma. Did you ever? His grandma gasped. But what she thought was, a duck on a tractor? That's impossible. That's totally awesome, Edison shouted. But what he thought was, no one's going to believe this. Marcine, the waitress, looked up from her pad and noticed Cat. Heavens to Betsy, she explained. But what she thought was, I like cats. Deputy Bob blabbered, if that don't be all. But what he thought was, how am I going to explain this to the sheriff? A man named Otis chimed in, I must be seeing things. But what he thought was, oh no, not again. Holy cow, hollered Manny the cook. But what he thought was, holy cow. Manny usually said exactly what he thought. The mayor almost choked on his pie. Good gravy, he sputtered, but he thought, but what he thought was, those pigs are even fatter than I am. Corky just whistled. But what he thought was, that duck is smarter than he looks. 
Gwen came out of the restroom. Would you look at that, she exclaimed. But what she thought was, I can't see a thing without my glasses. Farmer Odell observed, that's a dang nice tractor. But what he thought was, hey, that's my tractor. He decided he'd better go after it and ran out the door. Everyone else ran out too and chased after him. By this time, Duck had turned onto the next street. The tra tractor shuddered to a stop. Duck tried turning the shiny little piece of metal again. Nothing happened. I don't know much about spelling, said Dog, but I think that E means it's the end of our ride. She cleared her throat. <clears throat> you know, she said, I think we might get in trouble for this. Let's get out of here, yelled Duck, just as Farmer Odell and everyone from the diner came around the corner. Uh -oh. oh, look at their faces. How do you think they feel? What expressions are they showing? I see some surprised, confused, shocked. Everyone burst out laughing. Nah, they all said, it couldn't have been. It was an optical illusion, exclaimed Otis. Farmer Dell said he must have left his tractor running on accident. I guess that explains it, Deputy Bob agreed. Then they all went back to the diner to finish their lunch. And no one ever admitted that on that day they had seen a cow, a goat, a cat, a dog, a sheep, a chicken, a horse, two pigs, a mouse, and a duck on a tractor. <laughs> How many animals is that? Let's count them. A cow, a goat, a cat, a dog, a sheep, a chicken, a horse, two pigs, a mouse, and a duck on a tractor. Ten animals, plus a duck, one duck, ten and one. Eleven animals on that tractor? That's too many animals. <laughs> the end. That was a good book. Alright, our last story for today is If You Give a Mouse a Cookie. The story that we read before was called If You Give a Moose a Muffin. So, let's do some more comparing and contrasting. How is this different? If you give a mouse a cookie, how is this different? Or the same as if you give a moose a muffin? If you give a mouse a cookie. If you give a mouse a cookie, he's going to ask for a glass of milk. When you give him the milk, he'll probably ask for a straw. When he's finished, he'll ask for a napkin. Then he'll want to look in a mirror to make sure he doesn't have a milk mustache. When he looks into the mirror, he might notice his hair needs a trim. So he'll probably ask for a pair of nail scissors. When he's finished giving himself a trim, he'll want a broom to sweep up. He'll start sweeping. He might get carried, carried away and sweep every room in the house. He may even end up washing the floors as well. When he's done, he'll probably want to take a nap. You'll have to fix up a little box for him with a blanket and a pillow. He'll crawl in, make himself comfortable, and fluff the pillow a few times. He'll probably ask you to read him a story. So you'll read to him from one of your books and he'll ask to see the pictures. When he looks at the pictures, he'll get so excited he'll want to draw one of his own. He'll ask for paper and crayons. He'll draw a picture. When the picture is finished, he'll want to sign his name. With a pen. Then he'll want to hang his picture on your refrigerator which means he'll need scotch tape. He'll hang up his drawing and stand back to look at it. Looking at the refrigerator will remind him that he's thirsty. So, he'll ask for a glass of milk. And chances are, if he asks for a glass of milk, 
he's going to want a cookie to go with it. And we're back at the beginning. <laughs> the end. So how was this? Did it remind you of the moose? If you give a moose a muffin book? It reminded me a little bit. <laughs> Alright friends, so there's going to be an activity down below and then also on the Seesaw Classroom. Thanks for joining me today for another read aloud. I had a lot of fun. Um, I've really enjoyed seeing you on our Zoom meetings and seeing the work that you're doing and seeing all the books that you all are reading. It makes me so happy seeing those things. So thank you so much for sharing that with me. Thanks for joining me here for our read alouds every day. Um, yeah. Take care of each other, take care of yourselves. Um, I hope you guys are enjoying yourselves. I hope you're working hard at home, but also having fun. I'll see you again next time. I love you. I miss you. Bye.